Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new challenge video. You guys seem to really enjoy the first six only challenges, so I thought I would bring those back for another ROM hack. This time we're taking a look at yet another one of Dreano's hacks, this time Pokemon Vault White. For those of you who don't know, this game is basically just a direct upgrade over the base game, every single Pokemon from gens 1 through 5 are available, and can all be caught in the main game. A lot of these are found really early as well, so we should have a really diverse team. For those of you who haven't seen a first 6 challenge before, let me just run over a couple of rules. I'm only allowed to use the first 6 Pokemon I find in the wild. This means I can't use my starter once I've got my full team, and I'm not allowed to change out any of my members, that's just the team I have to use. I can catch other Pokemon to use HMs for me, but only outside of battle, and of course no items in battle either apart from Pokeballs. Held items are also allowed, and that's pretty much it. Before we get started, shoutout goes to these people, who found the Dabbing Delibird in the last video. Once again, he's in this one too, so if you see him, just comment down below the timestamp and you might get featured in the next video. Also, if this video hits 1000 likes, I'll do this same challenge on Vault White 2, the sequel to this game. So if you want to see that, then make sure you smash that like button down below. I'm also trying to get to 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you like my content, then please consider hitting that subscribe button. It would really mean the world to me. Enough of all that self-promotion stuff, let's just get on with the challenge. I start the game and pick the female character this time, and call her Hinami. As always, comment down below if you get the reference. As I said before, I won't be using my starter in this run, but for those who are interested, I pick Tepig. I beat Bianca and Sharon and get my Pokedex and Pokeballs, so we can now finally catch our team members. Obviously, Route 1 is where we're going to get our first encounter, and it ends up being a Zigzagoon. I can't say I was particularly excited about this, but it'll do. I catch it and add it to the team and decide not to catch any more Pokemon on the first route, as the next couple of routes should have a better diversity of Pokemon. This means though that we do need to beat N with just a Zigzagoon. Not only that, but I can't really train it up much because we can't run into any more wild Pokemon. So this did take a couple of attempts, but at least we level up while we're beating him. Perline goes down easily enough to a couple of tackles. Roltz only takes two tackles to go down as well. And it was kinda close, but Poliwag wasn't even that much of a problem either. Once again, a few tackles are all we need to get the KO. Now we can go to the next route. My first encounter here is a Cricketot. Those of you who've seen my previous videos on this type of challenge will know, I always end up with a weak bug type. I catch it anyway, as per the rules, and before I can even get my next team member I beat this trainer here, where Cricketot grows to level 10 and immediately evolves into a Cricketoon. To be fair, for this point in the game, Cricketoon is pretty OP. It's got some decent stats, but I don't know how long it'll be useful for. I run into one more Pokemon whilst trying to get to the next town, and it ends up being a Houndour. I really like the idea of having a fast fire type on the team, so I'm happy with this inclusion. It's not often you get to have a dark type on these runs either. Before we can get to the next city though, we have to fight Bianca, but her team is really weak, Houndour basically just sweeps her entire team. I decide to take on the first gym leader with just these three Pokemon, as I can't actually access any of the other routes just yet, and I really want some Pokemon from the Dream Yard. Because we picked Tepic as our starter, Crest has a team full of water types, which surprise surprise we're no match for. I can't train up against the wild Pokemon unless I want to catch the first few Pokemon I find, and I've beaten most of the trainers up until this point. I realised quite quickly that I was going to need a new team member, so I tried my luck on Route 2 once again. This ended up being a mistake though, as it's a Wormpool. Another weak bug type. I have no choice but to add it to the team though, so who knows, maybe it'll be useful. I do some training on the last two remaining trainers that I hadn't fought, and in the process I'm able to level up Wormbull to level 10, where I can evolve it all the way into a Dustox. I'm definitely happy that I got a Dustox instead of a Beautifly, as anyone who's seen my Emerald Kaizo run of this will know, Beautifly is just dreadful. Dustox isn't much better though, but it's something. Now that I've beaten all the trainers that I can find, I realise that the only way I can train is to just fight the gym leader over and over again until I win, which we eventually did. First up is Oshawott, so I start with Cricketoon, and all we need to take it out is two bug bites, and we don't even take damage. Next up is Pampor, which is funnily enough his most difficult Pokemon, it basically just outspeeds my entire team, so I swap into our new Dustox as he goes for a workup, and slow it right down with a string shot. Now my entire team can outspeed it, and not only that, we poison it with a poison sting as well. We do go down to one acrobatics, but Dustox has basically done its job, so now I just swap into Zigzagoon and go for Headbutt. I get really lucky with my flinches here, as we flinch it twice in a row which brings it down to low health and then he heals with a potion, and we're able to bring it all the way back down to a sliver of health before he finally hits us. But then the poison takes effect and just knocks it out, thank god that's out the way. 
Next up is Squirtle, so I swap back into Krikatoon. And once again, Bug Bite is a two hit KO. Baby Zwigger is next, but also goes down in two hits. And next up is Totodile, who also goes down in two Bug Bites. We're now just down to his final Pokemon Piplup, but you guessed it, it goes down in two Bug Bites. Not gonna lie, Krikatoon is actually pretty good this early in the game. Piplup goes down and we've got ourselves the first badge. Now we can access the Dream Yard where I finally get my last two team members. First of which is a Moona. I've genuinely never used one of these before, so I'm actually really looking forward to this. Having a bulky Psychic type could also be a real asset to this team. I decide to get my final team member here as well, and it ends up being a Cleffer. The Fable isn't a bad Pokemon by any means, so once again I'm pretty happy. It rounds out the team quite nicely as well. We've now finally got our team of six. I beat Sharon once again and do some more training where we get our Zigzagoon to level 20 and it evolves into a Linoon. That's not the only Pokemon we evolved though. We also get Cleffo into a Clefairy so now it's not completely useless. Before we can take on the second gym we have to face N but he really wasn't a problem. So I move on to the second gym leader Lenora, but this was another brick wall. Her levels are just too high for me to deal with, so I was going to need to do some more training, which I do. In the process, Houndour actually evolves into Houndoom. Now this is something that I'm excited about. Houndoom is fast, it hits hard on both the physical and special side, so I think this is going to be the MVP of this team for a long time. I try facing Lenora once again, and this time things go better. First up is a Herdia, so I start with Houndoom, and she does have the Intimidate, but I'm not really worried, as we have Snarl, which is a special move. It does a good chunk of damage and she just wastes a turn going for work up, so we can just outspeed and take it out the next turn. Next up is B-Barrel, so I swap into Clefairy, as we have the super effective Magical Leaf. Unfortunately though, we get outsped in KO by a single Retaliate, and she has the Moody ability, which is terrifying, I'm not gonna lie to you. I swap into Linoon and go for a Headbutt, which does about 50%, and thankfully we get the Flinch. This means that we can take it out with one more Headbutt, no problem, and next up is Watchdog, so I swap into Dustox. Once again, she goes for a Retaliate, but we take the hit, and lower its speed with the String Shot. Now we can outspeed and hit a Bug Bite for a decent amount of damage, as she just goes for a Crunch to knock us out. I switch in Krikatoon, who's now faster, and go for the Bug Bite. It's not quite enough, but she misses the Hypnosis, which means we can outspeed and take it out with one more. And next up is Bufalan. This thing's really bulky, but I stand and go for a Rock Smash, which does just under half even with a crit, but it does lower her defense, and she misses the Rock Tomb. I decide to go for a Bug Bite this turn, but it's just not quite enough, and he goes for an Aerial Ace the next turn, which does decent damage to us as well. She does heal up with a Super Potion, but two more Bug Bites see to it no problem, and next up is Ordino. This thing wasn't really a problem though, as two Bug Bites take it out, and just look at all that experience we get. We're now just down to our final Pokemon, Chinchino. I swap in Linoon in the hopes of being faster, and we are. Not only that, we get another flinch with Headbutt, so you guessed it, one more is enough to take it out, and that's two badges down. We deal with Team Plasma in Pinwheel Forest, and Lenora actually gives us a Moonstone. We have two Pokemon on our team that can evolve with this Moonstone, but we're not going to get another one for a long time, so I really need to think this one through. We now arrive in Castelia City, where I decide to use that Moonstone. After thinking long and hard, I decide to give it to Moona. I feel like Mushana is going to be a little bit more useful to me than a Clefable, so I think this was the right choice. This means that Clefairy's going to have to stay as a Clefairy for a long time, but I do think it's a worthwhile trade-off. With that I take on the third gym leader Berg. I wasn't too scared of his bug types because we have Houndoom, but this was another difficult fight. First up is Masquerain which is actually bug water in this game, so I leave with Clefairy. We get outsped and immediately hit by a struggle bug which does good damage to us, as we confuse it with a sweet kiss. He does hit himself in confusion the next turn which is great, and we can put it to sleep with a sing. He does wake up relatively quickly though and just take us out with a scold, so I swap into Linoon and go for a headbutt as we get a critical hit, but even that's not quite enough to finish it off, and we get hit by another scold and he gets the burn as well. That's not the end of it though, he also heals up with a hyper potion, and headbutt's now doing hardly anything at all. I decide just to lower its accuracy instead with a sand attack, and it does actually work as he misses a struggle bug. We are going to go down the next turn though to our burn, so I decide just to go for Rock Smash in the hopes we can get a defense drop, which we do. We do go down to the burn though, so I swap into Krikatoon. We get outsped and hit by a struggle bug for a good amount of damage, and I go for a slash to bring it under half. He then just goes for an Ice Beam and gets a crit to take us out, so now I decide to swap into Houndoom. One Fire Fang is enough to finally finish that thing off, but that was just his first Pokemon. Next up is a Scallopede, so I swap into Dustox, and lower its speed with the String Shot. 
I can then hit a super effective side beam, but even that hardly does any damage whatsoever. And he hits us with a powerful Mega Horn. I do hit one more side beam to bring it down below half, but we get taken out the next turn, so I swap back into Houndoom. We do get poison, but one ember's enough to finish it off from there. And next up is Yan Mega. I swap in Mushana and go for a Psychic, but he goes for double team. Really? You're gonna be that guy? Psychic still hits though and it does a lot of damage. And next turn we take an air cutter no problem and take it out with one more Psychic. Scythe is up next so I swap back into Houndoom. And he hits us with a really powerful aerial ace. Which we do just hang on from and then hit back with an ember. It's not enough for a one shot but we do get the burn. So because I'm gonna need Houndoom later. I decide to swap back into Mishana. Because he's burned the aerial ace hardly does any damage whatsoever. And then the burn damage leaves him on a sliver of health. Mishana actually tanks the struggle bug just with 11 health, and then I go for Moonlight to get some health back. The burn damage finally takes it out, and next up is Vesperquen. He goes for the struggle bug which once again we survive with just 10 health remaining, and we put it to sleep with the hypnosis. We do get taken out by the poison damage though, so I swap back into Houndoom. I go for the super effective ember which does about half of its health, and he continues to sleep. This is crucial as we're on our last Pokemon. We go for one more Ember for the knockout and now it's down to his final Pokemon, Levani. All we need to do to win this is be faster. I go for one more 4 times super effective Ember and we are faster. This means we can take it out in one hit. If we'd been outsped or if that move hadn't KO'd we would have lost. But we just about pulled through and earned the third badge. We face off against Bianca once again, but as always she's really not that much of a problem. So let's move on to the 4th gym leader Elisa. She starts off with an Amolga so I lead off with Linoon, and goes straight for the headbutt and get yet another flinch. One more is enough to knock it out, and next up is Ampharos. I send in Dustox and go for a light screen as most of her moves are special, but she has the same idea. I now just hit a weak bug bite but we get hit by the static, so I decide to swap into Mushana as he goes for a Volt Switch. In comes Luxray who's part dark in this game so I really can't hit it, so I decide just to put it to sleep instead. Now I swap into Linoon and go for the super effective dig, which does well over half as she wakes up and goes for a dark pulse. We take the hit no problem though and one more dig is all we need to get the KO, and now Ampharos comes back out again. I decide just to go for another dig which does great damage but not quite enough, and we get hit by the static again but it doesn't really matter, as she just hits us with a super effective focus blast which there's just no way we're surviving. I send Mashana back out but she just heals up with a hyper potion, and because of the light screen, Psychic really doesn't do that much. I go for one more but she just goes for one more Volt Switch, and this time goes into Manectric. Psychic does a lot of damage this turn though, and next turn I swap back into Dustox, who actually lives a Thunderbolt. There's no way we're outspeeding though so we go down to one more, so now I swap into Houndoom. We're still outsped though and he goes for a Volt Switch for a small amount of damage, and sends in Ampharos for the third time. I hit it with a snarl for good damage and we're able to outspeed and take it out with one more. And next up is Raichu. I send in Krikatoon but we do get outsped, and she goes for another Volt Switch. This is actually really annoying. Minectric comes back out again, but to be honest that wasn't really a good play as 1x is enough to finish it off from there. Next up is Zeb Striker, so I decide to swap into Clefairy. Obviously we get outsped, and she goes for a wild charge but we survive with just 10 health remaining. Not only that we go for a super effective dig, yes Clefairy can learn dig, and it does okay damage. We get taken out by a quick attack though, so this turn I swap back into Houndoom, who gets outsped and almost taken out by another wild charge. We hang on with a sliver though and finish it off with a fire fang, and I swap back into Mishana for our final Pokemon Raichu. I go for Moonlight, and the quick claw which Mishana's holding takes effect, so we move first. Because of this we survive a couple of volts which is no problem, and hit back with a Psychic which is enough for a one shot thanks to a critical hit. Raichu goes down and we've already got half the badges. Sharon's got a much stronger team now but this fight still wasn't too bad. He starts off with a Staraptor so I leave with Clefairy, and immediately we just get taken out by a single close combat. Probably not my smartest move then but it's fine as I just swap into Linoon, and one hit KO with a critical hit headbutt. Samrot's up next and is part fighting in this game, so I swap into Mushana who has the super effective psychic moves, and thankfully it's a one shot. Next up is Simis here so I stay in as he goes for a nasty plot, which you might not think is scary but Simis here actually got buffed in this game. I hit another psychic which does about 75% of its health and thank goodness he misses the fire blast the next turn. This means we can take it out with one more psychic and next up is Gigalith. I stay in and go for the psychic because Gigalith's special defense isn't amazing, and it's almost a one hit KO. Not only that, he just wastes a turn going for Iron Defense, so I can just take it out with one more. Last up is Duosion though, so I swap into Krikatoon, and I have the super effective X Scissor, which is an easy one shot as well. Even with his buffed up team, that was kind of a sweep. 
The next real challenge is the fifth gym leader Clay, and right off the bat he has a Hippowdon which means we've got to face a sand team. As you can see by the level of Linoon, this fight took me a lot of attempts. I go straight for the grass not as Hippowdon is a thick ass boy, and it does well over half. He does hit back with a bulldoze for a small amount, but despite the speed drop we're faster and one more grass knot's all we need. Next up is Seismitoad so I swap into Dustox, and for some reason he just keeps on hitting me with weak moves, which gives me the opportunity to set up a Toxic and then start hitting Silverwinds. Eventually we're able to whittle it down to the point where the Toxic damage finishes it off, and next up is Donphan. I stay in and go for a weak Bug Buzz, which does a small amount of damage before we go down to a bulldoze. I swap in Clefairy who has the super effective Magical Leaf, but we get hit by a Stone Edge which is almost enough to take us out from full health. We do hang on though, but Magical Leaf really doesn't do that much damage either, and we go down to an Ice Shard the next turn. I swap Linoon back in and go for another Grass Knot which finishes it off, and next up is Rhyperia, so I swap into Houndoom. You might think this is a strange play, but to be honest Houndoom doesn't really have that much use in this fight. I'm able to hit a Dark Pulse which does a decent amount of damage, but he retaliates with a Hammer Arm, which is super effective, so yeah, we're not surviving that. But from this range, Linoon's Grass Knot is enough to KO, and next up is Excadrill. This is the absolute biggest pain on his team. His ability means he's faster than my whole team thanks to the Sandstorm, and it has Sword Stance. I try and put it to sleep with Hypnosis, but we miss, and then we get hit by an Earthquake, but we just hang on. We do finally land the Hypnosis the second turn, and I can hit a couple of weak moves before we go down to the Sandstorm damage. Mishana's done its job though, all it needed to do was put Excadrill to sleep, just long enough to the point where I can go for Dig with Linoon. It's base 100 power in this game, so the same as Earthquake, and thankfully from that range we can take out the Excadrill. Trust me, this thing was near undefeatable. His final Pokemon is a Crocodile, so I stay in, and go for the Grass Knot which does about 50% of its health. Not only that, we just survive a Bulldoze after the Sandstorm damage, and somehow we're still faster. This means that one more Grass Knot's enough to take it out, and we finally win the 5th badge. On the way to the next town, Houndoom actually tries to learn Flamethrower, which means we finally have a strong stab special move on both our types. Now we can take on the 6th gym leader Skylar, and compared to Clay, this fight was a breeze. Pun somewhat intended. She starts off with a Mandibuzz, so I leave with Linoon, and to start trying to flinch it with Headbutt. We're able to get two hits in before we get confused by a Swagger, but thankfully we don't hit ourselves with confusion, and because of the boosted attack, we can just take it out from there. Braviary's up next, so I stay in to take advantage of our attack boost, and it does do about half its health as she just goes for Tailwind. She is now faster though and hits a massive Brave Bird on us, but we just hang on. We can take it out with one more Headbutt, and next up is Skarmory, so I swap into Houndoom. Because of the Tailwind, she is still faster though and hits a Brave Bird, but Houndoom's just able to survive, and take it out with a single Flamethrower. Next up is Gliscor, which is basically the biggest threat on her team, so I just swap into Clefairy, I'm not really sure why. It sets up a sword stance as I hit a weak magical leaf, and we get taken out in one hit by a single acrobatics. Now I swap back into Linoon and go for the headbutt strategy once again, but we don't get the flinch and we get taken out by another acrobatics. I swap into Houndoom praying that we're faster but we're not, and once again we go down. This thing's sweeping right now. I swap in Mishana though which has the quick claw, and thankfully it takes effect. This means we can move first and take it out with a single psychic. That was really close. Next up is Altaria, so I decide to stay in, and we take a Dragon Rush really easily. I hit back with another Psychic, but it doesn't do as much as I was hoping it would, and she starts setting up the Dragon Dance, which could be a bit of a problem. I do get a critical hit Psychic the next turn, but it's not quite enough to finish it off, and of course she heals up with a Hyper Potion the next turn. I get a really good stroke of luck though as our Quick Claw activates, which means we can hit a Psychic, and then she misses the Dragon Rush. Unfortunately she does hit the second one though, and not only that, she gets a Flinch as well. I get another insane streak of luck though, as I get a quick claw boost three times in a row. The first time to heal up with Moonlight, and the next two to finally finish it off with Psychic. We're now just down to her final Pokemon which is a Swanner. You thought my quick claw luck had run out, but no. We get another quick claw boost, and we're able to hit a four times super effective charge beam. It doesn't quite take it out from full health though, but we do get the special attack boost. But then we get hit by a Skull which actually burns us, but this actually ended up being quite useful. We have the synchronize ability so she also gets burned as well, and while we do go down to the burn, she's in really bad shape. I swap into Cricketoon and go for the Perish Song just to be safe, but we survive the incoming Scold, and the burn damage finishes it off. Swanna goes down and we've already got 6 of the 8 badges. There's another Sharon fight here but I'm going to skip over this one, as to be honest his team is pretty much the same. So that means the next real fight is the 7th gym leader Bryson. 
He starts off with an Obama Snow, which means, yep, this is a hail team. But we've got Houndoom, so this shouldn't be too bad. I outspeed and go for the Flamethrower right off the bat for an easy one-shot. And next up is Bear Tick, which is part fighting in this game. I swap in Mishana and we get the Quick Claw boost again. And Psychic does huge damage. We do get hit by an Icicle Crash, which does a lot of damage as well. And unfortunately, we don't get a second Quick Claw boost, which means we go down to one more. I swap in Houndoom, though, is faster and just finish it off with another Flamethrower. And next up is Cloyster. Despite it being a water type, I decide to stay in, as it's got really bad special defense. And as you can see, Flamethrower almost takes out from full health. He does go for dive, but I have a plan. I swap in Clefairy, who has the Rocky Helmet. This deals damage to the opponent when they use a contact move, and dive is one of those moves. It does take us out in one hit, but the Rocky Helmet finishes it off. Next up is Cryagonal, so I swap back into Houndoom again. And this thing has really good special defense, so I decide to go for Fire Fang. We do get hit by a Confuse Ray, but we're able to hit through Confusion, and one Fire Fang is all we need for the KO. Next up is Mamoswine, so I swap into Linoon, and we're able to bring it all the way down to red health thanks to Headbutt with our flinches, but of course he does go for a Hyper Potion. I'm able to bring it roughly to about half its health before we go down, so you guessed it, I swap back into Houndoom and go for another Flamethrower. It's enough to KO from that range, and it's down to his final Pokemon Vanillux. Believe it or not, this is another Pokemon that got massively buffed in this game, but that doesn't really matter as we outspeed, and a single flamethrower is all we need for the KO. That gym was actually kinda easy, but only because of Houndoom. There's a bit more Team Plasma stuff here, but I'm gonna skip over this for now. And instead, let's face Bianca. I know I've been glossing over her fights for a long time now, but she actually did put up a fight this time. She starts with the main showers I lead with Linoon, and instantly we get taken out by a high jump kick. I don't know why I thought I'd be faster. I swap in Mishana as we get hit by an Acrobatics, but it doesn't do too much. And Psychic is an easy one-shot from there, thanks to a critical hit. Next up is Simipore, so I stay in and go for another Psychic, and we get the Quick Claw boost as well. And it does about half its health and lowers its special defense. We take another Acrobatics like an absolute beast, and then we get a second Quick Claw boost. It's enough to take it out, and next up is Gothitelle, which is actually part dark in this game, so it's four times weak to bug. So I swap into Crookatoon. We do get hit by both Attract and Thunder Wave, but we still manage to hit through and hit an X Scissor, which is an easy one shot. Next up is Chandelure, so I swap into Houndoom and go for the nasty plot, which was kind of risky, but it paid off. She actually misses the Fire Blast, so next turn I can just hit with a super effective Dark Pulse, which unsurprisingly is also a one shot. Next up is Superior, though, which is part Dragon in this game, and its Outrage does a real number on us. We do survive, though, and I hit back with a Sludge Bomb, which is super effective, unlike Flamethrower, and again, it's an easy one shot. Next up is Persian, so I stay in, but she actually has the Fake Out, which is enough to finish off Houndoom. I swap in Krikatoon, who has the super effective Brick Break, as we survive a Slash with health to spare. Brick Break does a good amount of damage in return as well, but it's not quite enough when we go down the next turn. I swap in Dustox, as she actually misses the Hypnosis, and go for a Bug Buzz, but it's not enough. Really, Dustox? Of course, she goes for a full Restore, and once again, Bug Buzz does hardly any damage. I do hit a Sludge Bomb the next turn though and we even get the Poison, but we go down to another Slash the next turn, so I swap into Clefairy. This is basically a guaranteed win now, as she's poisoned and we have the Rocky Helmet. She goes for the Slash which makes contact, only for us to knock it out with a Magical Leaf. Persian goes down and that's Bianca beaten for the final time. We arrive in Opelucid City, but there's something I need to do first. I pick up a Moonstone in Spiral Mountain, and we can finally evolve Clefairy. It's been really lagging behind for quite a while now, so I'm glad it can finally be useful. Clefable's pretty bulky and can learn some really good TMs as well, so it should be an asset to the team. With our fully evolved team, we can take on the 8th and final gym leader Iris. She starts off with the Drudagon, so I lead off with our new Clefable, and I've taught it Blizzard for this fight. We outspeed and Blizzard does a huge amount of damage, as we get a critical hit and freeze it at the same time. That was about the best start I could ask for. We don't miss the follow up Blizzard, so it's enough to finish it off. And next up is Kingdra, so I swap into Mashana. Straight away, she goes for the super powered Draco Meteor, but Mashana's a defensive beast and takes it no problem. Psychic doesn't do that much in return though, and she sets up the rain the next turn, which is terrifying. A second Psychic doesn't quite take it out, but we do get the special defense drop, and for some reason, instead of attacking or healing up, she just goes for a Dragon Dance. That means we can take it out with one more Psychic. I'll take it. Next up is Dragonite though, which is definitely one of the most difficult Pokemon on our team to beat. And she goes for another Draco Meteor, but we survive with just 21 health. Thanks to Multiscale, our Psychic hardly does any damage though. And we get taken out the next turn by a Hurricane. I switch Clefable back in and go for the super effective Blizzard once again. But somehow it survives on a sliver of health. Once again though, she doesn't heal for some reason, so we can take it out with one more. And next up is Superior. 
This thing is absolutely terrifying as it has the contrary ability, which means that stat drops become stat gains. As you can see here, she goes to Draco Meteor and gets a plus two in special attack. This is almost unfair. I do hit a super effective sludge bomb though, and we get the poison as well. Obviously we don't survive another Draco Meteor, and now she's got plus four special attack. I swap in Cricketune just as I don't think it'll be particularly useful in this fight, but she actually misses the Draco Meteor. That was insanely lucky. I go for the X-Scissor and it's enough to finish it off, and next up is Altaria. I swap in Houndoom and go straight for the Dark Pulse, and she just goes for a Cotton Guard. That boosts physical defense and I'm using a special move so I'm not really worried, and a second Dark Pulse brings it down to red health and makes her flinch. This means that one more Dark Pulse is all we need for the KO, and we're down to our final Pokemon Haxorus. This thing was a real pain. This fight took a lot of attempts just because of this one Pokemon. And as you can see, we get outsped and taken out by one Outrage. I'm just down to my final Pokemon Linoon now, so I'm in a really rough spot. I go for the Dig just so she won't hit the Outrage, and thankfully she does get confused. Now I hit the Dig which does okay damage, as she hits herself in confusion which is just what I needed. Now we can go for the Headbutt which brings it down to KO range but she does heal up with a Citrus Berry, but we get a lucky flinch. Not only that, we get a second flinch the next turn, so I go for one more, and she survives on a sliver of health. But the Poke Gods had mercy on my soul, as we get yet another flinch. I seriously cannot believe the luck involved in this fight. We can go for one more headbutt now and finish it off, and finally beat Iris. What a weird match that was. We've now got all 8 badges, but before we can take on the Pokemon League, we have to face Sharon one more time. As always, he starts off with a Staraptor, so I lead off with Linoon. This was a pretty dumb play though, as I try and get the flinch but we don't, and we go down to a single close combat. Great job, me. I swap in Houndoom who's actually faster, and thanks to his lowered defenses, one flamethrower is all we need. Next up is Simis here, so I swap into Mishana, as we get hit by a fire blast. As always, Mishana's a tanky beast so we take it no problem, and Psychic does huge damage in return. Not only that, he misses the fire blast the next turn, so we can take it out with one more Psychic. I stay in for Samurott, but unfortunately he has the Mega Horn, which not even Mashana can survive. I swap in Dustox as he misses the Hydro Pump, and set up Quiver Dance, which we recently learned. This move is absolutely overpowered, and it actually makes Dustox usable. I set up a second Quiver Dance as he finally hits a Hydro Pump on us, but as you can see, because of our boosted stats, it hardly does any damage. Now I go for the plus two Sludge Bomb, but it still does under half as he goes for the Shell Smash. Now that is terrifying. Because of this he's now faster than us again, but he misses another Hydro Pump, and his special defense is lowered, so one more Sludge Bomb is all we need. That actually ended up being beneficial to us. I don't want to waste my stat boost so I stay in for Gigalith, and hit a powered up Bug Buzz. It does over half and lowers his special defense, but of course we get taken out by a Stone Edge, so I just swap into Houndoom outspeed and finish it off with a Dark Pulse. Next up is Rayonicus, so I swap into Cricketune, and go for the super effective X-Scissor. It does bring it down below half, but then he eats a Citrus Berry, which does bring him just above half now, but he just goes for Wonder Room. I go for another x Scissor, which I thought would be an easy one-shot from there, but he survives on a sliver of health. Not only that, he goes for Recover to get some health back, but that doesn't actually make a difference as we just get a critical hit the next turn. His final Pokemon is Executor, so I decide to stay in as it's four times weak to bug, and we outspeed and go for another x Scissor, which would have been a one-shot, but he has a Focus Sash. He goes for Sunny Day which activates his Chlorophyll ability, so now he's faster than us. He goes for the Psychic and gets a critical hit which takes us out from full health. That is not how I expected that matchup to go. I swap in Clefable who's my bulkiest Pokemon at this point, and we take a Solar Beam no problem and just finish it off with a Shadow Ball. Executor goes down and we beat Sharon for the final time. We make our way through Victory Road, and finally arrive at the Pokemon League. I've done quite a bit of training so let's take a look at our final team. Overall, this team is a real mixed bag. Some members have actually proven themselves to be really useful, like for example Mushana and Houndoom, but some Pokemon, namely Krikatoon and Dustox, haven't really been doing that much. I think the team is quite balanced though, so I think it'll be strong enough to beat the Elite Four. After all though, there is only one way to find out, so let's see how we do. First up is Ghost Type user Chantel. This fight wasn't too bad solely because of Houndoom. She leads off with a Drifblim so I go straight for the Dark Pulse, which actually just takes it out in one hit. I thought Drifblim was bulkier than that. Next up is Golux so I decide to swap into Krikatoon, as I don't want to get hit by an Earthquake. I go for the Night Slash which almost takes it out from full health thanks to a critical hit, but she survives on a sliver of health and hits a Shadow Punch. We do take the hit though and go for another Night Slash, but of course she heals up with a full Restore. 
We don't get any crits this time though, so we can only bring it down to red health. As we go down to another Shadow Punch. I swap in Linoon, who's definitely faster, and go for a Shadow Claw to finish it off. And next up is Chandelure, so I swap back into Houndoom. I don't want to risk going for a nasty plot, so I go straight for the Dark Pulse, which once again is an easy one-shot. Jellicent's up next though, so I decide to swap into Linoon once again, and go for Shadow Claw, which does okay damage. Unfortunately though, her ability means we can't use it anymore, as we get hit by a Toxic. I go for the Dig as she fully heals with a Recover, and Dig really isn't doing that much damage. She hits back with a Scold, which does huge damage to us, and we can't even hit another Dig before we go down to the Toxic damage. I take a risk and go back into Houndoom though and go for another Dark Pulse, and thankfully it is just enough to KO. Miss Magius is up next, so I swap into Clefable, and she starts boosting with Nasty Plot. Shadow Ball does loads of damage though thanks to a crit, and next turn we survive a plus 2 Thunderbolt, and finish it off with one more Shadow Ball. We're now down to our final Pokemon Frostlass, but despite not being faster, Houndoom takes a Thunderbolt no problem, and takes it out in one single Flamethrower. That fight wasn't actually that bad, much to my surprise. Next up is Grimsley, the Dark type user, but I'm not really too worried as we do have two Bug types on the team. Absol's up first, so I start with Krikatoon, and we get hit by a Mega Horn, but it doesn't do as much as I was expecting. I hit back with an Excisor for an easy KO, and next up is Honchkrow, so I swap into Clefable. He goes for the Brave Bird, which was actually a really bad choice, as we hang on and our ability Cute Charm activates, and then he takes a lot of damage from both Rocky Helmet and his recoil damage. Then we can just go for a Blizzard for the KO from there. Textbook. Sharpedo is up next, so I swap into Linoon, and just outspeed and go for a Headbutt. It does about half as he hits a waterfall for decent damage, and he has the speed boost which could be a problem. We do get outsped the next turn he hits another waterfall, but we survive with just 6 health remaining, and take it out with one more headbutt. Crocodile's up next so I swap into Dustox, and we just about survive an earthquake, and go for a quiver dance. Now we're faster and able to hit a bug buzz for good damage, but unfortunately we can't survive another attack, so I just swap into Houndoom. He does fully heal with a full restore, but one flamethrower does over half, and a second one is enough to finish it off from there. Bisharp's up next but it can't survive a single flamethrower, so we're just down to his final Pokemon which is his own Houndoom. I switch in Linoon who I know is going to be faster, and go for the super effective dig. It brings it all the way down to red health, but he eats a Salak Berry which raises his speed. He takes out Linoon with the Dark Pulse from there, so I just swap into my own Houndoom. Instead of attacking he goes for a Torment for some reason, which means I could just finish it off with a Sludge Bomb. Houndoom goes down and that's already half of the Elite Four dealt with. Next up is Caitlyn, but once again I'm not really scared. Half of my team is super effective against Psychic, so this fight wasn't too much of a problem. First up is Behem, so I start with Houndoom, and take it out with a single Dark Pulse. I send in Cricketoon for Reuniclus, and outspeed and go for an Exorcism, which takes it out from full health as well thanks to a lucky crit. Gothitelle's up next so I stay in, but much to my surprise he is faster. We do survive a Psychic though, and easily KO with a single X Scissor. Sigalyph is up next so I swap back into Houndoom once again, as she just goes for Protect twice in a row for some reason, and then I can just take it out with a single Dark Pulse when it fails. Weird move choice there. Next up is Gardevoir though which could be a bit of a problem, but I stay in and go for a Dark Pulse, which brings it down to red health. She does heal with a Citrus Berry though, and hit back with a super effective Focus Blast. I was sure this was going to KO but somehow we live the hit, and I can just finish it off with another Dark Pulse, and now we're down to our final Pokemon Mashana. I stay in and go for another Dark Pulse, but we know that Mashana is a bulky beast, so it does just hang on. She goes for the Calm Mind which could be a bit of a problem, but she just goes for a full restore which means we can go for another Dark Pulse, and then I go for a second one hoping it would be enough, but she survives on a sliver of health. Instead of attacking though, she just goes for a Toxic. I'm assuming she just can't hit a Dark type. And we can just take it out with one final Dark Pulse. That was probably the easiest Elite Four member so far. From the easiest though, to definitely the most difficult. My team really struggles against fighting types, and this guy was no exception. It took a few attempts, but we managed to get the win. His first Pokemon, Braylon, goes down easily to one Flamethrower from Houndoom. And next up is Main Chao. He does hit with a fake up for a small amount of damage, but the next turn we get the Quick Claw activation, and take it out with a single Psychic. Next up is Throw, so I decide to stay in, but we get outsped and hit by an Earthquake for a small amount of damage, but then we can just take it out with one critical hit Psychic. Next up is Sork, so I swap into Clefable, which you might think is a weird choice, but I have a plan. I know for a fact he has the Sturdy ability, so I just let him hit me with a close combat, which lowers his defences, and then he takes some damage from the Rocky Helmet. This means I can swap into Houndoom who's definitely faster, and because of his low defense, one flamethrower is all we need. I send in Dustox for the Harry Armor, which once again goes for Fake Out. 
Next turn I set up a Quiver Dance though, as we take an Ice Punch with health to spare. Now I just go for the boosted Sludge Bomb, which does great damage thanks to a crit and we get the poison. Not only that, we survive another Ice Punch. And even with him fully healing with a full restore, we can do some good damage and get another poison. We're able to bring it all the way down to red health by the time we finally go down. So now I can just swap into Houndoom and finish it off with a flamethrower. We're now already down to his final Pokemon Conkelder, so I just swap into Mashana. Instead of attacking, he goes for bulk up, but that doesn't worry me in the slightest. Psychic is super effective, and it's just an easy one shot. Conkelder goes down, and we've beaten the Elite Four. All that stands between us and victory now is the champion. Or at least it would be, but it's actually N. And let me tell you, N was no joke. I lost time and time again to this guy, so don't be alarmed to see that my levels are going to shoot up quite a bit as I did some training. We did eventually get the win though. He starts off with a Reshiram as I lead with Dustox. You might think this is a weird play, but you'll see. I get outsped and hit by a flamethrower which we survived no problem, and go for a Quiver Dance. I then outspeed and go for a Bug Buzz which you would think is not very effective, but no. It's super effective because it's not a Reshiram but a Zoroark. It goes down in one hit and next up is Heracross, so I just stay in to take advantage of our boosted stats and go for a Sludge Bomb. It doesn't do anywhere near as much as I was hoping though, and we go down to a Stone Edge, so I just swap into Houndoom and go for a Flamethrower. Obviously it's enough to take it out from that range. And next up is Clinklang, I'm not really sure why he sent that out now. We just outspeed it and KO with a single Flamethrower as well. Next up is Lapras though, so I swap into Krikatoon, and go for the super effective Strength. I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier that Strength is a rock type move in this game. It does okay damage I suppose, but not as much as I was hoping for, and we get taken out by a single Ice Beam thanks to a critical hit. I swap in Mishana as she's my special wall, and we take a Surf with absolute ease. I hit back with a Charge Beam which doesn't do too much but we do get the special attack boost, and next turn he goes for a Perish Song, as we take it out with a second Charge Beam and get another boost. I decide to stay in for his next Pokemon Jolteon, who does actually set up a Light Screen. Thanks to our boosted special attack though, Psychic is still a 2 hit KO, and on the second one our Quick Claw takes effect, and finishes it off just before the Perisong can take effect. I get out of there while I can and swap into Linoon for his last Pokemon Reshiram, and it is the real Reshiram this time. I outspeed and hit a super effective Dig, which all things considered does actually do good damage. He does hit back with a Fusion Flare though, which we do actually survive. I go for a Headbutt because I don't want him to heal up, and it does okay damage before we go down to a Dragon Pulse. I swap in Houndoom as it's the only Pokemon that can really outspeed this thing, and go for a Dark Pulse which is just enough to finish it off, and we finally beat an N. Before we can say we've beaten this challenge though, we've also got to face Getsis. I'm not gonna lie to you, this was kind of a weird fight. He starts off with a Drapion as I lead off with Dustox once again, so I decide to set up some Quiver Dances, as he just keeps going for Acupressure. I was able to get two Quiver Dances in before I hit a Bug Buzz, and even though our special attack is doubled, look how little that move is doing. I go for another one though and we actually get a critical hit which does take it out, and next up is Hydreigon. Obviously I stay in as our stats are really buffed up, and hit another Bug Buzz which almost takes it out from full health. He does go for a Fire Blast but because of our boosted special defense we survive no problem, and even though he goes for a full restore, we can take it back down to red health with one more Bug Buzz. I'm not gonna lie, I got a little bit greedy here and go for another Quiver Dance, but this does end up working as we survive another Fire Blast. Now I just Le finish Mal. it off with one more Bug Buzz, and next up is Genesect. This is not good. I go for another Bug Buzz, but even at plus three it hardly does any damage, but we do just survive a Flamethrower. This means I can hit one more Bug Buzz to bring it down to low health, before we finally go down to an Ice Beam. Not gonna lie, Dustox really put in work there. I switch in Houndoom who can outspeed and finish it off with a flamethrower, even with the Okaberry it's just too low health to survive. Next up is Feraligatr so I swap into Mashana, and try and put it to sleep with Hypnosis as we get hit by a super effective crunch. We do survive the hit but unfortunately we miss our Hypnosis, and we don't get any quick claw activations or anything and we go down the next turn. I switch in Linoon and hit a couple of headbutts for good damage before we get hit by a waterfall, but we do survive. I'm able to bring it all the way down to red health with one more headbutt, before we finally go down to a crunch. Once again I swap into Houndoom and just finish it off with a Dark Pulse, and next up is Electros. I switch in Krikatoon and just go for an X Scissor which does okay damage, and he goes for Coil. A second X Scissor brings it down to about half its health, but we get taken out by a single Rock Slide, so I swap back into Houndoom once again. 
One flamethrower is all we need to get the KO, and we're already down to his final Pokemon, Dusk Noir. He just goes for the weak Shadow Sneak, and then we can hit a super effective Dark Pulse, which is a one shot. Dusk Noir goes down and we beat Getsis, and beat Pokemon Vault White using the first six Pokemon I found. I've gotta say, these first six runs are always really fun. In fact, I would go as far to say as they're my favourite runs to do. This one in particular was no different. The team was a little bit hit and miss, I'm not gonna lie, but overall it was pretty solid. Houndoom and Mushano were by far the best members of the team, but there were a couple of surprises. Linoom was surprisingly decent, and even Dustox proved itself to be useful once it learned Quiver Dance. There were a couple of weak links in the team, Clefable really didn't do much the whole game to be honest, and Krikatoon was just, well, awful. It really just didn't have anything going for it whatsoever. But overall, the team was not bad. Would I recommend you play this game? Absolutely. As I've said in the past, Dreano's hacks are just some of the best out there. I've played through basically every single ROM hack he's ever released, and I've enjoyed every single one of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Once again though, if you enjoyed this video then please leave a like anyway, and comment down below with what challenge I should take on next. Remember, if I pick your idea, you'll get a shout out in the next video. Once again, thank you all so much for your support. I'm trying to hit 20,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So yeah, if you enjoyed my content, then please subscribe. As always, that's all I've got for you today. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.